Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we'll be covering the Ripper. It's not a submachine gun or an assault rifle. It is both. It is a true hybrid weapon that allows you to swap back and forth between SMG and AR modes. It's part of the new DLC for Season Pass holders. You can't use this weapon unless you got the Season Pass, but there's a lot of questions about it. Is it good, bad? What's the difference between the modes? And most importantly, is it overpowered? I'm going to be addressing all of those concerns today in today's In Depth episode. And one thing I'd like to say in the beginning is that unfortunately, my number one stat guy, the number one stat guy in the world who uh, picks apart the PC code, Marvel 4 has gone a little bit AWOL and I haven't seen any sort of raw stats from him, so everything I'm giving you today is hand tested from the Xbox One version of the game. So far, no guns have varied between Xbox One, PlayStation 3, 4, 360, and PC, but these are all hand tested by me. Now let's talk about the damage. It is a medium damage weapon, killing in between 3 and 5 shots, depending on your range from the enemy. I do not have the raw numbers yet, but judging from behavior, I'm going to guess that it'll deal 40 up close and probably 20 at a distance, maybe 24, not entirely sure, but it is 3 to 5 shots to kill depending on your range, and most importantly, there is no change between the submachine gun and assault rifle modes. Yes, the submachine gun mode does not do any less damage than the assault rifle mode, and it won't cause you to have more shots to kill, though there is a range variable. It will kill in between 2 and 3 headshots depending on your range. 3 headshots at long range is actually a little bit strong for weapons, so I'm assuming it might have a 1.5x 6x headshot multiplier which is very good, so it will kill very quickly with headshots. I did a lot of testing and I found that the Ripper gets approximately double range when assault rifle mode. When you swap over to the assault rifle mode, the range is essentially doubled. When it's in submachine gun mode, it has a very similar range to the Bison submachine gun, and when you put it in assault rifle mode, it has a very similar range to the SA-805, which is actually one of the better ranged weapons, and I would say that it makes a strong competitor for an assault rifle, if not for some other things, which we're going to talk in a little bit. But one thing that I wanted to show you right now in the live commentary are these exact ranges. A lot of times you don't like meters and more figurative things, so I'm going to show you the exact three shot kill range, and this is it, give or take maybe one foot. This is the maximum three shot kill range of the SMG. I'm going to shoot J-Hub until he's dead there. Then I'm going to reload. We're going to swap it over to assault rifle mode, and we're going to swap over to a different clip. I'm going to show you just how much range you get. This is the maximum three shot kill range in assault rifle mode, and as you can see, it is much, much further away. It's approximately double, so swapping it over to the assault rifle mode, you do get a lot of extra range. Rate of fire is a somewhat complicated thing because we have two rates of fire depending on the modes. Yes, the rate of fire does change depending on the mode, and rapid fire does some strange things to this weapon. We've talked a lot about frame rounding or whatever, so I got these numbers exactly from the game, and these are using more common numbers, and especially closer to the frame rounding. The submachine gun rate of fire is 900 RPM. This isn't a theoretical RPM, this is the actual rate of fire on the console. It probably shoots at the 937 and rounds down, but that's very fast for submachine guns. That's right up there at top tier. Assault rifle rate of fire is 600 RPM, which is slow for assault rifles. That's down toward the bottom end of assault rifles. And the interesting thing that I found is that when you put rapid fire on this weapon, the submachine gun rate of fire is completely unaffected, but the assault rifle rate of fire goes up considerably. So rapid fire on the Ripper is useless on the submachine gun portion of the game. I didn't believe it either. I, I took into the placebo effect. I thought it was great. I used it for a long time. Totally not true. However, the assault rifle gets a very decent buff, so do remember that the rapid fire is only for the assault rifle portion of the weapon, and my understanding is that it was designed that way on purpose to keep the submachine gun portion from becoming overpowered. When it comes to time to kill, the time to kill is fast for a submachine gun. It does pretty good damage. It kills in three shots up close, four or five. It ranges, you know, that's good for a submachine gun, and it shoots fast. The submachine gun part of the Ripper will kill fast. The assault rifle part of the Ripper will kill somewhat more on an average to slow. Uh, I'm not going to quite put it slow. It's really more middle of the pack for assault rifles, so the AR part of the uh, Ripper has an average time to kill. When it comes to recoil, it's low to medium for both. I would say that the submachine gun has low recoil and the assault rifle has low to medium recoil. Now technically the assault rifle has lower recoil than the submachine gun, so you would think I'm crazy, but I'm comparing the assault rifle mode to other assault rifles. One thing that's important to note about this is that the recoil is random and not precise. A precise recoil pattern is one that will kick up and to the right 
right every time. Some guns have a very precise pattern and you can correct for them very easily. This is a random one. It has it's more of a big circular or ovular pattern. You know it's going to drift randomly left, right, up and down with no particular pattern. So it's much harder to correct for. But overall you'll find that the recoil is low. And again the assault rifle mode has less recoil than the SMG mode. Not only in that it shoots slower and it's easier to control, but it literally has less recoil. So if you really need accurate shots, if you're running low on bullets, if you need to hit somebody at long range, aside from the range because you're playing hardcore, it won't matter as much, the assault rifle mode has less recoil. Another important accuracy component is idle sway. Both have very high idle sway. The idle sway delay, or when you aim down sights immediately, it won't begin to sway. You get just about a second of delay. It's a little bit on the long side, but they have a lot of idle sway. The Ripper has, especially on the assault rifle, more than the submachine gun, because you, you know, on the submachine gun in close range, it doesn't matter. You'll find that, that your sight bobs left, right, up, and down when your character breathes more than most of the other assault rifles, and that can become very frustrating. However, we're going to move into some more key components about this weapon that really distinguishes it from the pack. Number one is that it has uh, it has SMG hip fire accuracy in both modes. This is critical. It has submachine gun hip fire accuracy when it's in submachine gun mode, and when you swap it over to assault rifle mode, it retains the submachine gun hip fire accuracy. That means that it is an excellent hip fire weapon. That's why I run steady aim on it. We're going to get to the class build in a little bit, but that is a critical component of this weapon is that it is an excellent, excellent hip fire weapon. The aim down sights time is somewhat in between submachine guns and assault rifles at 0 0.23 seconds. SMG in this game normally do 0 0.2 or 200 milliseconds and assault rifle 0 0.3 or 300 milliseconds. And this one is a little bit slower than most submachine guns but it's closer to an SMG than an assault rifle and it does aim down sights very quickly which means I don't really need quick draw and that's a very critical thing. The reload time is unfortunately kind of slow. An empty reload is 3 seconds which is very slow for an assault rifle. That's something more like a marksman rifle and the cancel time is 1.8 seconds. Again very slow. That's why I run slide of hand pretty frequently or I have it in the specialist perks that we'll talk about later. So do keep in mind that if you run out of bullets, you're going to be in a pickle reloading, but it does have quite a few bullets. Standard magazine size is 32, which would be high for an assault rifle, but low for a submachine gun. Extended mags goes all the way up to 48, one of my favorite attachments on this weapon. Very, very good, and uh, you're probably not going to run out of bullets too often unless you just go rapid fire and hose people in their faces, but again, rapid fire only affects the assault rifle mode. Judging optics is one of the few subjective parts of the in-depth episodes. I'm going to say that it has good iron sights. The iron sights on the SMG mode are very strong. They're easy to use. The black bar does stick up a little bit, and if I shoot at people at long range, sometimes I have pr trouble tracking the target, but generally speaking, it's not a problem, and when I use it in SMG ranges, not at all. The assault rifle has okay-ish optics. The optical attachment, when you flip it up, it's good, it's easy to use, but it is a little bit blurry. It's not as good as a red or a blue dot sight at long ranges, but I can definitely make do with it, no problem. Penetration is low. It seems low. This is very difficult to test. I believe it has submachine gun level wall penetration, which means wall bangs are no good. An important feature is that the swap time is instant. The very instant you click on the right thumbstick, or I'm not sure what the PC button is, it will immediately swap to the other mode. That means if you're in assault rifle mode and you need to burst the speed, the second you click that button, even if the sights aren't done transitioning, it will spray very, very fast. And the same thing on SMG mode. If you need to break your sights open for assault rifle, the second you click the button, it's already in assault rifle mode and the optic transition is just something for visual effect. This is another critical component. It has SMG movement speed and sidestep and ADS speed. So yeah, it moves fast. SMGs move at 100%. This one moves at 100%. It has the SMG sidestepping and aim down sights walking that you can do. So in this game and most of the other Call of Duty games, you can sidestep pretty fast and aim down sight move pretty fast with some machine guns. Whereas assault rifles, you really can't. You run kind of slow. They lock you in place, that sort of thing. And this one has no penalties for that whatsoever. So that's a very, very big benefit to this weapon. It allows you to be very highly mobile. And the question you want to ask is now, is the Ripper OP? Is this weapon overpowered? No, but just barely no. It is a top tier weapon. This is a very good weapon. This is not a joke weapon. This, you know, some a lot of the last DLC weapons have been a little bit of poopy. This one is not so. This is a top tier weapon. This is a top three, top five, maybe even a top two weapon. Is it massively crazy overpowered? Not by my definition, but don't make the mistake that it is not a strong weapon. My best class for the Ripper is somewhat unusual, especially for my class builds, because I don't need Quick Draw or Stalker for this gun to be good. I run the three attachments. 
attachments, perks, so I get grip, extended mags, and suppressor. A lot of people do like the rapid fire, but since that doesn't affect the SMG part of it, I don't use it. If you don't like the suppressor, you can trade out for muzzle brake, that works fine too. Ready up and steady aim go together like peanut butter and jelly. Steady aim is excellent on this weapon because you can hip fire from both modes very effectively. I use focus and fully loaded, or scavenger, just kind of depending on what I want. My next what my next perk is a Kimbo pistols, and then I run a not my perk, my uh, item, and then I run a lot of specialist perks. My Kimbo pistols usually like a Kimbo silencer, a Kimbo muzzle breaker, whatever, and I get the rest of the perks I need with specialist. I get my off the grid, a sleight of hand, agility, lightweight. All of those are good perks with this, and I like to pick up the rest with specialist, and that is my class recommendation. And again, the Ripper is a very good weapon, not overpowered, but just barely not overpowered and quite strong. And that's all for this in-depth episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe, or check out my sponsors down in the description, Elgato, uh, Scuff, Gamma, all that sort of stuff. Oh, Brass Monkey apps. I have my own app now. <laughs> and the previous episode was on the MTS-255. You can click that box on the left, it'll open a new window, or you can click the box on the right and check out the Field Orders episode. As always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter